critic. In October, I did a video review of Here Come the Monsters, a 90s made-for-TV Monsters reboot that I felt surprisingly captured the spirit of the original show. In that video, I praised the performances, especially that of Herman Munster actor Edward Herman, and the incredible makeup and set design which I felt really elevated that film. I also briefly mentioned that the film had a sequel, The Munster's Scary Little Christmas. Another TV movie made the following year that's somehow more readily available than its predecessor. I said I'd probably come back to this in December, and when I found a copy of it at my local thrift store for free, I'm not kidding, this DVD was sitting on a table of stuff they were giving away, and I just knew it was fate intervening. So I decide to look back on this other Forgotten Monsters reboot to decide if it's a faithful homage or a cheap, rushed fever dream that feels like the cinematic equivalent of washing down stale candy corn with spoiled eggnog. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's the latter. Poop. The first big problem with this movie is that they ditched the entire main cast of the previous film, which is a real shame because the cast of Here Come the Monsters were pretty perfect. Oh, of course! <laughs> 13! <laughs> I don't know if this was related to budget issues or creative differences, but the film really suffers because it's missing the cast of that film. Character actor Sam McMurray takes over the Herman Munster role, and while he's not bad per se, he doesn't capture the character as well as Edward Herman did. For example, here's a scene of Herman as Herman. And now McMurray in a very similar scene. McMurray is just a tad bit over the top in his performance, whereas Herman was a little more subtle in his performance. Oops. Sandy Barron takes over the role of Grandpa Munster. You are looking at Eastern Europe's preeminent alchemist. I could make it snow in your pants if I want. Well, I'd rather you didn't if it's all the same to you. <laughs> who most of you probably know for his obsession with a pen on Seinfeld. Take the pen. Oh, no. Go ahead. I couldn't. Come on, take the pen. I can't take Do it. Do me a personal favor. No, plate. I'm not take comfortable. Take the pen. I cannot take it. Take the pen. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm positive. Take the pen. 90s staple kids actor Bug Hall plays Eddie Munster, and Elaine Hendricks and Anne Magnuson make up the rest of the Munster family. Marilyn, in this version, is a lot different than how she was portrayed previously, almost being a little naive and ditzy. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I've always been the ugliest member of my family. You're the ugliest. Well, yes. I don't have any neck bolts, fangs, or fur. Her character is conflicted because she doesn't understand how someone that looks like her could be considered beautiful. And of course, it wouldn't be a Munsters movie without a romantic subplot involving Marilyn. The rest of the plot revolves around Eddie Munster missing his home of Transylvania during the holidays. If I can't have a Transylvanian Christmas, I don't want Christmas at all. Burn spot. And the rest of the family attempting to throw him the perfect Christmas in America. All Eddie needs snow. All Eddie needs is an old fashioned Transylvanian white Christmas. And you're probably thinking this is a weird balance Munsters and Christmas. And you'd be right. It's two tones that don't quite match up. And how do you fit those zillion toys into the one big burlap bag? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna black out now. Things go especially off the rails when, wait for this, Grandpa Monster accidentally transports Santa and two of his elves to California from the North Pole. You're in Mockingbird Heights, California. I'm Marilyn Munster, and this is my grandpa. He accidentally transported you here. California? Two days before Christmas, and I'm in Bar Humbug in California? But this Santa is... how to put it best. 
Well, do you remember when your uncle dressed up as Santa when you were a kid at the family holiday party, but he'd had a few drinks and really didn't seem to care? That's basically the Santa in this movie. Hell, his costume is even falling apart on screen and no one seems to care. And his elves are also portrayed as pretty strange, being a little pervy and really tired of working for Santa Claus. Hey Larry, I've just found religion. <laughs> She defies the laws of physics. It'll take me now to climb up that, but it'll be, be worth, worth the trip. trip. <laughs> <laughs> they got it all here. Surfing, ball games, mud wrestling, naked beaches. Poop. So you probably see where this one is going. The monsters naturally have to join forces and help Santa get back to the North Pole before Christmas because for some reason he can't get back himself even though he's a magical being. I mean, could this movie get any weirder tonally? On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me Eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying Five <laughs> Okay, I, I spoke too soon. Also, this movie makes the joke with the carolers not once, not twice, but three times. Where have I seen this gag before? Trigger. Oh right, a more faithful adaptation of a kooky family. There's also this really weird scene where Herman gets a job as a nude model and this happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, the elves sabotage Grandpa's plan to get Santa back home because they don't want to work on Christmas. We're gonna put the load warrior out of commission! How are we gonna do that? I don't know, let me think! Yup, you heard right. The elves are basically the villains in this story. So what do they do? They decide to turn Santa into a giant fruitcake. And then Lily Monster accidentally gifts the Santa fruitcake to a neighbor, who then decides to serve it to a bunch of people, and this happens. <laughs> when this scene happened, I just stopped knowing what the movie was anymore, and I have ceased to be able to understand it. If you watch this channel, you know that I like to approach everything I review with a certain optimism. But I can't even do that here because I just don't understand it. It leaves me asking myself, who, what, where, when, why, how did someone think this was a good idea? It's even more baffling that this film is so readily available on streaming and DVD when you can't find a single copy of the much better predecessor anywhere in the U.S. But I've already talked about that film at length. Back to this fever dream. The monsters track down the elves to help turn Santa back to normal, with Herman giving them a holiday lecture. Just imagine all the kids in all the world who are going to wake up tomorrow and find nothing under their trees. But then the lecture still doesn't work. It takes some leather-clad woman at the bar telling them off. I used to think short guys were really hot. I even used to have fantasies about elves. Ooh. But you guys are really uncool. Shame on you for ruining Christmas. Because why not? Marilyn falls in love with a guy who's gotten six minutes of screen time. Hi. And then a bunch of bikers from that bar help turn Herman into a toy machine somehow, because why start making sense at this point? Herman then becomes Santa's new helper, and the bikers become reindeer because the production couldn't afford actual reindeer. So our biker-led sleigh rides off into the night carrying our heroes. Christmas to all, and to all a good night! Don't wear that for me, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And the credits roll, right? No. There's still seven more minutes left in which the entire catalog of Universal Monsters show up for a dance party at the Monsters' house, using up the $17 that were left in the budget. And then we cut the credits, right? No. There's still three more minutes where it snows at the Monsters' house, they win a prize for having the best Christmas decoration, 
Eddie opens presents, and then the Munsters all sing their own version of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen as we cut to credits finally. I stand by what I said earlier on Here Come the Munsters. It's a faithful, albeit ridiculous movie that at least seems to care about the brand. I said at the beginning I couldn't imagine why the cast from that movie wasn't involved in this. And watching this film now, it's pretty obvious that they probably saw it for what it was. A bizarre tonal mess that was made more for its commercial value than to respect the brand. The Munsters are bound to be resurrected by Hollywood again, either in a new sitcom or an animated film. I only hope whoever is behind that resurrection looks more to Here Come the Munsters and less to whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Poop. I wanted to be optimistic here, but there's so little to be optimistic about. At the very least, I can say there hasn't been a shameless Christmas sequel like it since. That is too adorable for words. I can think of a few. A Christmas Story 2, the official sequel. Poop. This is going to be a long month.